episode of the Four Downs podcast. We are joined, as always, by Josh, a.k.a. Kabloomski from the Kabloomski Sports Talk. Um, obviously, we rode out Hurricane Milton down here in Florida. Um, we've got our power back. Josh drove to another location so he could record today. Um, Dedication. Some of us had a, a rougher, yeah, some of us had a rougher hurricane experience than others. Mm. I'm a little further north, so I got the winds, um, a lot of rain, um, very slight damage to my fence, but nothing like you guys got down there in St. Pete. And where where are you based normally? Is it Plantation? No, yeah, it's a, it's a small little town called Parish, which is uh, it borders like Bradenton and Palmetto area right there in the Sarasota, you know, Manatee community there. Um, counties there uh we have we got smacked uh we lost power for a little bit um but everybody's safe everybody's good a uh, little fence damage a little roof damage but nothing that can't be fixed so i'm just happy to be on the show with you and talk some football and talk some sports i'm excited as always we're gonna start off with thursday night football uh obviously i was watching the royals and yankees playoff game and you probably were without power uh i was able to go back and watch some of the highlights um watch the like condensed game uh so we're going to talk about this game best we can right. um my takeaway is when brock Purdy throws the ball less the 49ers are better okay 28 uh pass attempts i believe against the seahawks they win they ran the ball more than they passed against the cardinals they passed the ball more than they ran my takeaway on this 49ers team solid defense um their offense is based around kind of retaining possession, moving the ball down the field efficiently. They can't play from behind, and that is a symbol of – or a a sort of indication that Brock Purdy is not much more than a game manager. Um, A lot of people were really high on him early in his career. I was not. I think he's an efficient sort of Alex Smith quarterback, which I love. But in the modern game, I think you need somebody who can move the ball down the field quickly – not just efficiently. Um, The Seahawks didn't look great. Uh, I am sort of in the same boat on Geno Smith as I am on Brock Purdy. Love Geno. However, when you have Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, you can't be getting two yards a carry like they were with uh, Kenneth Walker this game. Both of those two running backs have to be heavily involved in order for them to win a game to give their defense an opportunity to, you know, create turnovers, create three and outs, get the ball back to the offense, um, and be efficient. It's two teams that sort of capitalize on efficiency, which one team did this game, the other did not. Mm -hmm. Um, And the result was sort of dictated by that. What do you think, Josh? Absolutely. I I don't disagree with anything you said. I think I I want to just – um, to caveat what, on what you said. Um, first of all, let's talk about Brock Purdy. Like you said, game manager, but hey, it's working, right? Um, you don't got to be a Patrick Mahomes. You don't got to be a Josh Allen, you know, and, and and just do what you got to do with the weapons that you have, and you're going to get wins. At the end of the day, that's what the NFL is about is the wins, right? Um, but, and then when you look at it, though, he quietly threw three touchdowns. So, like, it, it, you know, just because he's a game manager, he's still producing at a high level. Uh, another thing that I took away, because I did kind of see this game. Um, sorry, I'm moving this around. The the injury of Jordan Mason is going to be huge. I think that uh, we're underestimating the factor of Christian McCaffrey coming back and the possibility of him com- coming back. Jordan Mason was making that process, like, kind of not talked about because he was doing really good, right? Um such a down downgrade at the next level. We're talking about fourth, fifth, you know, running backs at the depth chart um, at that position. Granted, uh, Shanahan is a great, great uh, offensive mind, runs the offensive well, um, and, and has weapons to do so to kind of mask that position. And I think that's a, a big question to have for there. Another thing that I want to talk about, too, is, uh, well, real quick, Debo Samuel, look out for him in the backfield more. Um, but really mm-hmm. quick, uh, the defense. Defense showed out. I think that we, uh, you talk about Geno Smith in Seattle. They're a sneaky little good, like, I don't want to say little, sneaky good offensive team. Um, 49ers were banged up, um, but just went out there and just showed up and showed out. Um, this is the second week, I believe, that Geno Smith and the offense kind of like, kind of put the clamps on, got, got, got the uh, clamps put on, on them. But I feel like, uh, 
I think it's a tribute more to where San Francisco is at, as a whole in, the, in that game. I agree. I agree. And yeah, losing Jordan Mason, that's huge. It is really, really huge because like you said, Christian McCaffrey going down, a lot of people kind of counted him out. But on those three losses they have, you've got Christian McCaffrey out, Debo Samuel banged up, George Kittle banged up. Debo Samuel is an extension of their running game with the RPOs, with the um, screen passing, with the jet sweep sort of gadget plays. That just builds on the already deadly rushing attack. And then George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, that's just sort of extra. That's something else they can do once the running game gets going. With no Jordan Mason, with no Christian McCaffrey, you take a lot of that away. So so we got to keep an eye on that. Um, that really could doom their season if, if Mason were to miss two or three weeks Huge. even, could put them Huge. in sort of an insurmountable hole. 100%. All right. So that brings us to the end of Thursday Night Football. That brings us to the end of Thursday Night Football. We're going to move on to our Sunday game picks. Um, this is Josh's turn to let's pick go. the games. Let's go. So without further ado, uh, let's get into that now. The first game on Sunday is going to be Jaguars Bears. This is another London game, London. so keep take that into consideration. Josh, what do you think there? They're riding a hot train over there in Jacksonville. They bring it over to London. I think their owners from over there. Um, they keep that uh, momentum going. Jags for sure up top. And somehow the Jags have also become like the home team of London. People over there love them, so it's almost like a home game for them. Keep in mind, absolutely. Your boys going to New Orleans one o'clock. It's showtime, baby. We took an L against the big-time um, opponent in um, Atlanta. They're contenders, and we got another contender that we got to um, compete with. I think that we go to New Orleans. They've been our Achilles heel for some time now, but we show up on top. Good. Go Bucks. Ravens Commanders in Baltimore. Boy, look at here. If you like to see excitement, if you want to see, you know, this this running gun, this this awesome uh great quarterback that we got in on display in this game, this is the game to watch. You got um Lamar Jackson and Lamar Jackson 2.0. You know what I mean? Uh, what, what I think the X factor is is going to be the running game. I don't know what we got over there in Washington if if B Rob is playing or not, but I think that's going to be the X factor uh, who can control the ball um, in a time possession. Baltimore on top. Yeah, good luck controlling Derrick Henry uh, <laughs> with the Commanders. The way Commanders, by the way, have had a a poor run defense, so that's going to play a big factor. A game I like next: Cardinals Packers. This is going to be another shootout as well, in my opinion. Where is this one at? At, at Packers? This is in Green Bay. Yeah, in showtime. Rainbow. Showtime. Jordan Love is there. Um, he's he's uh, gaining strength over there. Um, as long as Reed is on the field, he is okay. Uh, Wicks is starting to show up. And listen, not to take anything what's going on down there in Arizona. They're just not there yet. They're just not there yet. They got good glimpses, but they're just not there yet. Green Bay on top. Uh, Colts Titans, our friend Alex, uh, our producer. Colts fans, what do you got for that one? Is he is he gonna is he gonna predict that one? No, he's oh, no, he's perfect. not with us today. He's perfect, perfect. Care okay, perfect. I think, I think he's gonna make a special guest. Da, na, na, no, da, my da, bad. Breaking news. No, um, I listen. Is uh is a Rod is is uh, a R five playing? I don't think so. I, I would have to double check. Right. Like I said. Because of the power loss stuff, I'm a little behind I, 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 on the following on the news. We'll, we'll, we'll double check. And um, I think that's going to be a play a factor in that. Uh, I know JT is not playing. I know Jonathan Taylor is not playing. But Trey Sermon mm-hmm. kind of fit in fairly well there. Um, their passing game needs to come up. It needs to happen. Whether it be one of the uh, downs, one of the, the the role players needs to show up over there in India. And that's in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think they squeak it out, though. I really do. So that way, Alex is on my side. Alex, I got you there, buddy. All right. A few bad games in a row, about five bad games in a row. Let's just rattle these ones off. Texans at Patriots. Uh, I would like to see Drake May, but uh, CJ Stroud's the man. Houston. He is the man. Uh, Easy one. Browns in Philadelphia. Philly all day. Yeah. Chargers at Broncos, a uh, divisional game yeah. for the second and third place teams, I believe. No, no, no. I like uh, Chargers, if I'm not mistaken, just came off a bye. I like them. Listen, Denver is doing doing okay, though. They're just not ready either, though. Yeah. Chargers. 
Uh, Steelers at Raiders. I like this one. It's going to be a bloodbath. Um, Steelers. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, another bloodbath. Falcons at Panthers. Panthers have looked better. What do you think there? I'm a Red Rocket fan. I'm a Red Rocket fan. Um, and Deontay Johnson is the truth. Um, he shows out this week and, and balls out for they, – they show them that they're a lethal one-two punch there. Ooh, okay. I like that. Lions at Cowboys. I think this may be the game of the week outside of Washington, Baltimore. Is it a is there a world that um, Gibbs and Montgomery run for like one fifty each? Um, and and if not, it, it's, it's there is a world. It might be this world. It might be this world. <laughs> it's going to be this week. And if it's not, it's going to be damn close. Because if not, there I know Gibbs for sure would break one fifty total yardage. Um, and and Montgomery's just right there. Um, this is going to be a no doubt or no brainer. Uh, Forty two like twenty eight um, Lions. So you're a cowboy hater. I'm a cowboy liker. I just like Dak Prescott. Handsome, yeah, yeah. likable. Yeah. Uh, I root for him. <laughs> <laughs> Bengals, Giants, a battle of two bad teams. Surprisingly, the Bengals are a bad team this year. I know it. I know it. Listen, Ch- Chase Brown, what? emergence of Chase Brown. Wait. Emergence of Chase okay, Brown. Let me just run that one real yeah, quick. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Uh, my timer went off. Okay. Um, let's cut that, Alex. Ready? Three, two, one. Uh, a battle of two bad teams. Surprisingly, the Bengals are one and four team this year. What do you got there? Bengals at Giants. Bengals at Giants. I like I like where the Bengals are going. Um, I think they're starting to figure it out. Um, obviously, you know Burrow and and Jamar Chase. They have the little bromance. They'll figure that out. You know, every little bromance has a little. But um, I have. I like the uh, assurgence of Chase Brown, the running back, though, and I think he's an X factor. I think he's slowly taking away the backfield away from Zach Moss, and I think that plays a factor in this game. Mm-hmm. I have Bengals on top. Okay. And Bills, Jets, a divisional matchup. Jets coming off some drama that we're going to discuss in the next segment. Josh, where are you, Bills, Jets? Uh, Bills are going to add salt to the wound, unfortunately. Um, I'm sorry, uh, J- uh, Bills Mafias, they don't play that. They don't like that sympathy role. Um, Josh Allen is one of those kick you when you're down type of players, respectfully. And I, and I like it. And, um, they're coming in there and, um, they're not worried about what you got going on on the other side. They're going to go in there and play. And, and, and their vibes and their momentum is, is still rocking. So I got Buffalo on top. Good. I, I would agree. Probably. And, I, there's no Chiefs game this week, so I can't say Chiefs by 70. I'm going to go Bills by 80. Nice. <laughs> Bills by 80. There's my uh, there's my bias pick of the week. Love it. Third topic of the day is the firing of Robert Sala in New York. Um, sort of disrespectfully, they had security walk him out. I think this whole thing is garbage. And before I get too upset about this, um, I'm going to hand over to Josh. Remember, folks, I am a major league Aaron Rodgers hater. If hating on Aaron Rodgers was a professional sport, I am Michael Jordan. I am Mickey Mantle. Um, I hate the guy. And if you are opposed to bias, go ahead and skip over the segment. Josh, I'll let you start this off, and then I'll I'll take it home at the end if, if that's okay with you. Well, wait, wait, we can we can we can start it off there. Um, we can start it off with the whole Aaron Rodgers and what kind of role he played in. I've gone on record and and been a huge fan of of, of Robert Sala. Um, I feel like he's um, he's a different type of leader. He's a different type of coach. Um, he's obviously defensive minded, but I've always been a fan. But you mentioned Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, pre pre Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, he was okay there. He was, you know, he was okay. He, um, you know, get, get, got a lot more time. Hey, you know, take your time, do what you got to do, build up how you want it to build, be built. Um, I think the easy way is to, to blame it and point the fingers at Aaron Rodgers here, but I feel like I, I want to believe that, um, I, I don't, I don't think that this is, this is the, the, the scenario that, that went down. I feel like, um, it was it was kind of like the the wheels are falling off and the head honcho you know is is the one that's going to take the fall and 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 um take one for the team you know so to speak and and he's one that i feel like would do that because you know he's a great like i say he's in my opinion he's a great coach um but he's also from what i see he's also a good off 
off the field as well. Great person, likable person, you know, just not all about football, he does other things in the community, blah, 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 blah. So we can talk about that as well. But um, I think that this is one where he was like, listen, for the betterment of the team, let me go ahead and step down. And then if I am the problem, then I know that I did it in a time. So I think that's what I want to believe. Um, and, and I got two more points real quick before I get it back. So that was one of my points. I, just, I don't think that Aaron Rodgers really had a big, big factor in this, honestly. Um, maybe he might have, you know, said a couple of whispers like he might, his, you know, how he is smirk and smart as he is. He might have said a couple of few things, you know, on the side. But I don't think that he was the sole reason why this went down. Um, my, my, my second point is, is that um, some coaches are just not, okay or good at being a head coach respectfully and that's okay and that is okay arthur smith you are a good offensive coordinator you're not a good uh head coach and that's okay spagnola you are a great great defensive court you you but you're not the ryan twins i can go on you know one might even argue you know todd Boyles. like hey maybe he might just want to take a seat back go back on the defensive side and let somebody else you know run the reins it's 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 okay and and i i don't see a, a near future and that's going to go into my next topic a future where um robert Sala is not on the sidelines uh you know i don't i don't think he's maybe gets a head coaching job again so quickly Maybe so. I don't know. But definitely on the defensive side of the ball. He, he's a great defensive mind. Uh, you got to remember what he did for San Francisco. Um, you know, the Jets are, you know, are, are, you know, we're on the right track. I just think that it was just a total, um, you know, uh, malfunction uh, uh, so far this year. And um, I think he's taken it on the chin, put his big boy pants on and said, hey, if it's me, it's me. Um, my third real quick bomb before I go. Um, Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator. Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead. I agree. Uh, well, okay, I agree. Dallas, D Dallas would be a good spot for him. I disagree with everything else you said. Okay. Um, I think that Sala got shafted. Yeah, he comes in in January of 2021. In April, they draft Zach Wilson. Terrible pick. I don't think he'd been there long enough to have a hand in that. Um, he's running the best defense in the NFL. If it, did, did ownership not know he was a defensive-minded head coach right. when he came in? Right. I think they did. Um, he's tied with the Chiefs for the le least amount of points allowed this season. I mean, Then they go out and throw money at Aaron Rodgers. They bring in Nathaniel Hackett. Nathaniel Hackett right. being a running joke in the NFL community. He's, he's terrible. He's really bad at what he does. Mm -hmm. If offense is the problem, that's not Robert Sala's fault. That's Aaron Rodgers' fault. Correct. He missed all of last season, yet they, they talk about his – sorry, my timer's going off. They talk about his overall record as part of the reason that he's being dismissed. He was without Aaron Rodgers all year last year. It's the guy who's supposed to come in and be the savior of this organization. They're playing sort of musical chairs with quarterbacks all year, yet what week 10 of last season Aaron Rodgers is still playing to play in the playoffs because New York was still in the playoff hunt. So – where where is the letdown? I think he's overachieved personally. He's done exactly what he was supposed to do: be a defensive head coach, build an elite defense. That's what he's done. Yeah. The offense, you bring in Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers' boys. You bring in Nathaniel Hackett. That's a recipe for disaster. Nobody is going to win in that scenario. Yeah. And I think you're wrong about uh, Aaron Rodgers not having a part in this. And I know you said that's what you want to believe. Right, right, right. I think you're a better man than I if you believe that because we've seen some stuff on the sidelines where Aaron Rodgers is kind of overruling or disrespecting Sala to his face on the sideline. Sala going up for a high five or a pat on the back and Rodgers walks right past him. We saw that clip. Yes, yes, yes. I, I commend you for looking on the bright side here. However, I think he was set up to fail. I'd love him to get another head coaching position. Yeah, me too. I think you're right. He will be a defensive coordinator. Yeah. Again, he's still young. Uh, he'll be a defensive coordinator somewhere. He'll turn that into the best defensive unit in the NFL. He'll get another head co coaching job, and he will be a playoff winning head coach here within the next – Three to four seasons. That's Ooh, my prediction. I like that. I like you that. actually, you went Absolutely. at me. You went at me in the fantasy chat because I was talking mad shit on Robert Sala. <laughs> and you, uh, you sort yeah. of put me in my place one time. I know, man. So it, after that, yeah. 
No, he's, I looked he's into good, it and I said, you know what, Josh is right. Yeah, he's just a good he's just a good coach, man. And and like I said before, I think all all what you said too is 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 you can't you can't fault that. And and I and I respect that, those viewpoints. But I think at the end of the day, um, he did get shafted, and 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 it's unfortunate. But he's he's a man about it. He's a pro's pro, and he will find out. He will he'll be he will be on the sideline soon. Um, let's move into our last topic. Okay. Wide receivers on the move? Yeah. Question mark. Um, these are wide receivers that we're not sure if they're going to be traded, but it's looking like they will. And my sort of take on this, let me start my time real quick. And we're going to try to go in less than five minutes here because we went a little over on the solid segment. Mm. Um, this is a market for wide receivers that is somewhat watered down. Um, not watered down in terms of talent, sort of watered down in terms of there being so much talent. So when I say watered down, I mean the return you're going to get for some of these receivers. Um, if you are, let's say, the Raiders trying to get a big return for Devontae Adams, and they ask for a second and third rounder, let's say, or a third rounder and, and uh, an additional cash consideration, the team that's after him is going to say, hey, I'll just go after Amari Cooper. I'll go after Deontay Johnson. I'll go after Christian Kirk. I'll go after T. Higgins. I'll go after Darius Slayton. I'll go after Adam Thielen. I'll go after K.J. Osborne or Tyreek Hill, maybe even. So I think a lot of these teams would be smart to move these wide receivers now before you get within a week of the deadline, and you're just trying to get rid of them to get that off your off the books. Um, the first one I want to talk about, it's sort of interesting, Christian Kirk to Washington. He has ties to the offensive coordinator down there, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, from his time in Arizona. Um, you give Jaden Daniels another, not elite wide receiver, but a guy who's a, a bona fide number two behind Terry McLaurin and that sort of exciting, high-energy uh, offense they run out there. I think that could do a lot. Oh, huge. For, um, for Jane Daniels. Uh, just another option. Um, the next one, I think, and this is a reading off my notes here, yeah. I think this is a dream scenario for the Bills. The Bills need a wide receiver, and we were talking about them being in on Devontae Adams. I think uh, Deontay Johnson would be an excellent move there. However, I think the very best move for the Bills right now outside of Devontae Adams would be T. Higgins. Yes. The Bengals aren't going to get anything for T. Higgins. That's because um, he's playing on that tag, $21.8 million this year. They are not allowed to negotiate with him during the season. So it's just a one-year rental. T. Higgins can go there, be the wide receiver one, show that he can be the wide receiver one, and then go after that big payday after the season. Meanwhile, Buffalo can then go to free agency, work on building up some of these young guys. Just rent T. Higgins for a fourth rounder, fifth rounder. Tell the Bengals, just like every other team's going to tell them, I'm not paying you big money for a guy that I have to pay big money to. Give me him. We'll get that $21.8 million off the books, and uh, we'll let him ball out for you. You had uh, Amari Cooper going to the Chiefs, if you want to talk, uh, speak on that one a little yeah, bit. I bet Amari you. Cooper, the Chiefs. How happy are you that, that I'm saying that, huh? Um, just trying to get out, just trying to get on your guys' good side. You know, I picked uh, the Colts to win for Alex, and now I'm having Amari Cooper go to Kansas City. No, but listen, it's it's what you were saying. You you talk about um, the what you're getting in return, uh, right? And and what the, the the cap space and all that money, blah 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 blah. But I mean, listen, Amari Cooper. We're still talking about him. He's still producing. He's still doing his thing. He's not going to be a diva going over to Kansas City. Kansas City doesn't need, you know, somebody else. Just come on here, play Andy Reid's role. You play your role of the offense. You're an X, you're an O, you're a Y, you're a Z. It's not about you're a Rice, you're a Mahomes, you're a Kelsey, you're a, No, it's that. And then whoever X, Y, Z is open, that's who gets the ball. You know, whatever. But And, and I think he is in a spot um, – you know, in a career, obviously, and and just I think why not? Why not? Because I, I honestly thought that Kansas City always needed a veteran presence over there. They always have nice, shiny new cars. They always have the you know the, the latest and greatest. It's all good, but um, that's why I was a I was a firm believer. Um, unfortunately, I thought that you guys were going to make a move for Mike Evans at one point in the past. 
Um, and, we and tried. yes, and not having a veteran presence like that, it just goes a long way. And um, I think Amari Cooper going to Kansas City, just the, the value for what you know you're getting a dollar a dollar amount to. Yeah, sign me up for that. I like it. I would love to see him uh, in Kansas City. I actually had Amari Cooper to the Jets if they miss out on Devontae mm -hmm. Adams. I like Cooper to the Chiefs. It's just not the kind of thing Brett Veach has done traditionally. I see him going after someone like a Deontay Johnson okay. over Cooper. I would prefer Cooper. I would absolutely prefer Amari Cooper because I think he would go for – a thousand yards in the remaining eleven or eleven or twelve games we have. Mm -hmm. I think he'd go for a thousand yards and eight touchdowns, uh, and I think the Chiefs would then win the Super Bowl oh, again. So um, but I trust I trust Brett Veach to do what's best for us. Um, so we will see. But I like the prediction. I think you're right. We need a veteran in the wide receiver room. Travis Kelsey is sort of that veteran mm. um, for the tight ends uh, in that group. I think we have Samaj P. Ryan and a guy like Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's been a part of two Super Bowl runs now for those running backs, young running backs like Pacheco, Carson Steele, if he sticks with the team. Um, but yeah, I think that wide receiver group, especially with all the injuries we've had, definitely needs a, a veteran presence there to kind of right the ship, help Xavier Worthy kind of learn how to be a team player, mm -hmm. how to play a role. Mm -hmm coming from college where it's sort of that running gun. Um, every guy out there is looking, is kind of trying to get his to uh, to build their draft stock. Now you're in the pros. It is the big boys. It's, it's time to play with the team. Right. Yeah, and I think I think Amari Cooper or Adam Thielen, anybody like that would help some of our young receivers. Even Rishi Rice come, coming back from injury, learning how to be a professional, going through rehab. A lot of these veteran wide receivers – have gone through injuries, maybe not like what Rice is going through, but they have been banged up before, and they can sort of show him, hey, this is how you put your, your nose to the grindstone and, and come back healthy. Unfortunately, that, right. you're, you're right about that. That, that. Real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. It, humbles, it humbles you. It humbles you. Obviously, being injured humbles you, humbles you but just during, going through the process and the grind of trying to get back, that's a whole different ball game. That's a whole different ball game. So you learn real quick and having that guy like, hey, you know, rookie, come over here. This is how you're going to do it, buddy. Come on. You know, and there's no handouts here. So I agree. All right. Well, guys, thank you for, for joining us today on our fifth episode. That's a big milestone getting to five. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for 50, 500. So uh, thank you, Josh, for driving uh, out to a location with power to get this recorded. I, I really appreciate that. Only for you, um, buddy. Look out from, yeah, of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, me and Josh getting together on the Kabloomski Sports Talk Show yep. for the division, or to preview the AL and NL championship rounds. Um, I know because the hurricane, you weren't able to get yeah. the wild card round preview up in time. Really so um, guys, tune in to the Kabloomski Sports Talk, and we will see you in a few days for some baseball. Thank you guys as always. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, whatever it is. We'll catch you next time.